Hello and welcome to PMU Unfiltered. If you're not sure what you're listening to, this is a permanent makeup video and podcast. Yeah, that's right. We're out here tattooing people's faces. So if you're new to the industry, if you're a veteran to the industry, come with me on my journey through permanent makeup because we're keeping it real, we're keeping it raw, and most of all, we're keeping this PMU unfiltered. Hi guys, welcome back to PMU Unfiltered. I'm your host Marlo and today's topic will be discussing sending your clients off with the confidence to take care of their aftercare. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to PMU Unfiltered. Yeah, that's right. You heard me before. This is a video and podcast. So if you've been listening to my podcast, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. I see the numbers growing in my analytics and I'm, I'm pumped, man. It's like super nice to know that someone's listening besides my mom. And she's got like far too many questions that I just can't answer because she's not like an industry people. So yeah, thanks mom, but where my peeps at? Okay, and then if you're watching or you're curious about this video cast situation, yeah, that's right. If you care to look at my mug, you can check me out at Marlo Cosmetic Tattoo YouTube channel. You can find me there. And then I have a little library of PMU Unfiltered. That's kind of how I decided to organize my life. So thank you so much. Please, if you're watching on my YouTube channel or you're watching on podcasts, wherever it is, please subscribe. It costs you nothing and it just lets me know that someone's watching and is getting some type of help or just company from this. So thank you so much. And let's get started on today's topic. Today's topic is about the client. We need to be confident in ourselves from the second they walk in that door to the second they leave, obviously. No one likes that feeling when they leave somewhere after spending quite a bit of money, kind of scratching their head wondering, did they do the right thing or were they in good hands? I think that's like a horrible feeling of, buyer's remorse and regret and we need to eliminate that as much as possible because we want that person to go and sing our praises to every single friend that they see after they leave our studio. Marlo was amazing. She's got a great personality. Her studio was super clean. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about the flaking. Everything's going to be great. I have to see her for a four week touch up. We need to give the client all the tools to sing our praises. And a major part of that is giving them the confidence and understanding of handling their aftercare, right? This is super duper important, super duper. It's my professional term. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tell you how I give my aftercare and little tips and tricks within my aftercare because let's face it, we're trying to keep some money in our pockets, but I really do believe that you can't have the client like walk out and empty handed clapping. It's just not a really good feeling. And if any of you ladies have ever had your eyebrows done or lashes or any type of beauty service, I think it's just nice to walk away with something in your hands that feels tangible. And for me, I have a little gift. Now you could make some printouts, you can get some sachet packets on Amazon, but I'm talking about the real stuff, the stuff that they need to get through aftercare on top of the coaching that they need to get through the aftercare. Now, I always send my clients off. Now, you're, if you're listening to me on my podcast and you're curious about what I'm showing, hop over to my videos on YouTube at Marlo Cosmetic Tattoo and you can see more of my visuals, but I'll try to be um, as articulate as possible so you can understand this over just uh, me chatting. I'm holding up a little card here. This is my Marlo Cosmetic Tattoo Aftercare card. And on the front face of it, I have my like happy, sad, loving faces and my journey. And it's all me. I made this so it looks like me and I think it's super cute. And my clients always laugh when they see it. They're like, oh my God, this is so cute. And then on the flip side of it, I have an actual breakdown of how to handle each day. And I think that's super important. So, I mean, not only do they feel more comfortable looking back on this card, but I'm not getting those endless text messages of like stress and like, oh my God, what is going on? This flaking off. Honestly, between you and me, 
I don't want to hear it. I really don't. I don't want to get a text message in the middle of another client or out at dinner with my friends or family, whatever, of some client like bugging. So I like to be very clear, very transparent, and I like to give a little manual to say, bon voyage, arrivederci, good luck, don't contact me, see you at the touch up. Is that too harsh? That's how I feel. What are you gonna do? So for starters, I have the little facial progression. I'm sure you've all seen the emoji face chart, but mine is as follows. Day one, and this is how I say it. We come to the end, we do a little payment. I said, okay, pay, and then let's go over this little packet. So at the end, this is my entire consultation. We read it together. I say, this is you today. And I point to this happy girl who looks so happy with all of these heart emojis all over her face. I say, I love my brows, right? I love my brows. They look amazing. You look amazing. I love my brows. This is you. Day two, two through five, these are too dark. Babe, they're going to get dark. It's just a part of the healing process. I promise they will not be this dark. I promise. But sometimes if you're like a makeup babe and you like things dark, I was like, I have a feeling you're going to get a little addicted to them being so bold, but I'm sorry. They're not going to look like that long term. So you have to feel the client out and like kind of play on them a little bit. Day five through 10, they're flaking off. Girl, you will peel. You will scab. Do not encourage the scab. You cannot continue to pick it off. First off, you're going to make your brows bleed and that's no good. Secondly, you will literally pick the pigment out. This is no bueno. If I see that you have no eyebrows left because you picked them off, I'm going to charge you full price at the touch up. Capiche? And usually we have very good rapport at this point in time. So we, we have this like loving, fun relationship. And again, the entire client experience is from the second they walk in the door. Honestly, it's from like your Instagram account. Your entire client experience is already determined before they walk in. All right, moving on. Five through 10, they're flaking off. They're upset. They're like, oh, what the hell? Like, oh, you told me I could do this. I, I cannot predict how you heal. Everyone is going to heal a little different. Every skin type is going to heal a little bit different. But whatever you do, don't pick. Yeah, if there's like a little flake hanging off like on a hair, you can encourage it. But if it's still on the skin, do not pick it off. Thank you. 10 through 15. Yep, I want them darker. Ooh, best believe I have all the clients reaching out to me, especially the microblading clients. They are so just disheartened that the microblading is so faint. And I know, you know, we've been taught this over and over again. Trust the process. But I have to tell them, look, babe, this is what happens. You get microbladed, everything gets dark, right? All of that dark juices, a little bit of blood mixes in, and they appear very dark. They, you get used to them a little dark. This scab comes along. You didn't pick the scab at all, but then they look really faint. Why are they faint? You have the microblade. I use all these like hand visuals too. The microblading pigment is down here. You're building new skin. The new skin relaxes and the pigment appears to have come to the top, but it's really the inflammation has relaxed and the pigment has less layers to be shown through and then the microblading comes back. Bizarre, trust the process, please. And they're like, okay, I get it. That's the face I want to see. I want to see a connection. I want to see a connection when I'm talking to them about aftercare. It's very important. I don't like the distractions of the phone. This one's texting. This one's calling to meet up for lunch. They're running out the door. The bag's on the shoulder. They're trying to put the... No, I take their undivided attention and we read this card together and I use my finger and we point. I do all of these manual things and I'm just very chatty with them, but I put on a show so they don't forget, right? Day 15 through 30, they are very excited for the touch-up because it's faded, it's popped back a little bit, they're less nervous, and they're ready, they're ready for the, that touch-up. They're ready for that touch-up process. And then touch-up, 
I'm so happy, thank you. And this is really just a fun moment because when the clients come back for the touch-up, they understand the process, they trust you, they've loved their brows, and they're ready for more. So there's just a lot more ease that comes with the touch-up. I know it's not financially the banger and you need to stay motivated. I do suggest for touch-ups, you charge separately. That is a good way that I stay motivated to do the touch-up. So I actually charge $150 for touch-up because I need to come into the studio, I need to open up a new set of materials, and I, I personally don't clump touch-up into my price. It's just, it's not motivating for me, and I need to keep myself motivated to do good work. And however you wanna structure that, do it however you want. If that's how you roll, that's how you roll. That that's works for me. Now, on the reverse side of this card, has the daily aftercare. I really love how I've broken this out. It's very simple. I'm gonna get a little close here for the video, but it's very simply laid out. And I have the first four hours, general washing behavior that needs to happen, day four through seven, and then day 31. So the first four hours, so there's two parts to this aftercare, right? There's the emotional side. You go through the emotional chart with them. You, you have to be confident that you've seen this before, even if you haven't. Study it, study this podcast, listen to it over and over again, listen to my other podcasts. You need to be confident in that client freaking out. So then there's the second part of the aftercare, which is what happens when they walk out? What do they do when they walk out? I say, first off, no touching the brows. You don't touch your brows. I just opened up a skin. Your hands have are full of bacteria. Do not touch your eyebrows when you leave the studio, please. And I don't know what it is about husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends. The first thing they want to do when they see you after you told them that you did your eyebrows is touch them. No, I will pop out of a trash can beside you and swat their hand away. And I usually get a good chuckle, but honestly, it's the truth. So extra, I know, this is just how I live my life. So for the first four hours, you're going to dab the area every 30 minutes for four hours. And then I give them a little baggie. So Fee has an aftercare wipe. And I think, um, God, what's the other one? The one in Canada, that's another one that has an aftercare wipe. I've done a lot of research on the ingredients and um, I actually really like the Fee Care After Wipes. I think they're really nice, they're well packaged, they're nice and moist when the people open them up and the towelet is big enough for them to get uh, multiple wipes out of it. Here, this is what it looks like. And they're quite affordable. I think a pack of five is 250. So if you're a little lazy um, or you just like kind of want to elevate your brand, uh, I don't know how that figures into two, but this, it looks really nice and it looks legit, but um, I I use them sometimes. I, you know, I'm like in between sometimes. Sometimes I'll use this for the first session and I'll do like a little homemade to go something for the touch up. Um, yeah, so I'll show you what I do for my aftercare bag. So my aftercare bag consists of Cotton rounds, a few cotton rounds. I like these in particular. They have um, they have like a weave on them. They're like woven, so they're not um, they don't flake and leave like residue on the brow. And then I have like a, I think like a three by three little baggie from Amazon. And then I put the cotton rounds into this little bag. And the magic potion on all of these aftercare bags is actually witch hazel. Witch Hazel is my secret little like nifty thing that I love. It's so much better than, I don't know, like green soap. You don't want to give the client green soap because personally I feel like that washes all of the work and I don't like green soap. I love this Dixon's Witchcraft, Witchcraft, what am I saying? What is this like? I can't, I can't with myself. This Dixon's Witch, Witch Hazel, this is really great. And then I just like, kind of get a few drops in there, squeeze it around, soak them up, soak them up just a little bit. You don't want the cotton rounds to be so wet that when they press it, it washes. You just want it to be wet to just 
wipe off a little goopy lymph. That's it. That's it. So I give them like four of these. So every 30 minutes over the next few hours, they just kind of give a little wipe wipe. And that's what I do. I'm like, okay, here we go. Here you go. This is for today. This is good for today. Every 30 minutes for the next four hours, you are going to wipe your eyebrows. Wipe, wipe. You are not going to rub them crazy. You're just going to give them a good wipe. You need to take that full layer of lymph off the eyebrow. What is lymph? Guys, I'm giving you all my tricks here. What is lymph? Ever pick a pimple and then when the pimple's done, there's just a clear liquid coming out? That is lymph. You walk away from the mirror, you come back and you have a crusty? That is lymph. Same with the eyebrows. We need to keep wiping that crusty off the top of the eyebrows. Otherwise, you're going to have some really fugly scabbing in too early. And then I'm going to have to do the job all over again. Ooh, perfection. My clients are so good at listening to me when I say that especially after laying in a bed for three hours. So we're gonna wipe the brow every 30 minutes like this. Okay, use that one, throw it out, use the next one. After four hours, garbage. And they're like, garbage, garbage, yes, garbage. Great, now it is okay to wash the face starting tomorrow morning, but it's very important that you go to bed with no crusty on the eyebrow tonight. So every day, starting tomorrow morning, you're going to wash the face nice and gentle, pat the eyebrows dry, don't touch the eyebrows all day, and wash the face before bed, sleep like a mummy. That's it. That's it. Now, four through seven, I actually don't introduce any type of cream and ointments into my aftercare programs till day four through seven. I don't like the idea of putting ointment on open skin because I think to me, logically, this is diluting the work. So I introduce ointment into my aftercare on day four. Now, if that person's super oily, whether this be powder brow or microblading, I introduce aftercare on day five. And if I could get any longer days out of them, it's really up to them if they even want to use ointment. So on day four, I also include these little A and D ointment packets. Are they cute? Are they beautiful? No. Fee has the skin candy, you're welcome to use that. Those are really great too. This I feel like just works in my packaging system and yeah, I wish it was cuter, but it's not. And it's what they need, so there we go. On day four through seven, you're gonna take a little bit of this ointment, beep, just a little bit, and go beep, beep. That's it. And I tell them, again, I will always say the time and time again, it is important to keep your clients informed so they can understand why we are saying these things. I'm very open with my clients. So I say, please do not too, put too much. If you smother the brow in the ointment, you will dilute the work. And they're like, dilute the work, yes, yes. They get it, they get it. And they're, they can understand it if we break it down for them. It's so much better, right? So day four through seven, or till you're done scabbing, a little bit of ointment. This is just for your comfort. Sometimes the scab gets a little tight when you start making facial expressions and the brow begins to crack with the scab. So just use a little bit of ointment just for your comfort. And they're like, okay, thank you so much. You know, they're happy to hear the word comfort after I just like tattooed their face. Bless. So my aftercare bag looks something like this. It has my emotional chart that's gonna get them through the month. Then it has the aftercare while from day one till they're done scabbing. They walk out with a little aftercare wipey situation, either this cotton round thing with some witch hazel on it, or maybe the fee wipes, either way. And then they get a little bit of ointment. And I say, not till day four, capiche? And they're like, capiche, capiche, we're good. And this is it. Oh, and then of course, ladies, you must throw in a business card. 
and maybe put it in like a little sachet packet or something like that, package it nice and cute. You know, it kind of works better in the purse if someone's just like grab and go. So that is my aftercare kind of routine that I go through with my clients. Make sure that your clients are focused on you and you have their full attention when you give aftercare. I've definitely given aftercare to clients where they're just their head is in 18 other places and they're just ready to get out of my studio after three hours with me. I know they're done with me, but this is very important that this message is, is given to them clearly and in, in a relatable way and you'll have better results for your touch-up and you won't have clients pestering you in that interim period while they're waiting for their touch-up. All right, guys, that's what I have for you guys today. If you ever have any questions, feel free to email me at pmuunfiltered at gmail.com. Definitely subscribe. Please let me know that someone is enjoying this. Give me a thumbs up. Whatever platform you're on, write a comment, something. All right, guys, that's what I have for you guys today. It was so good to see you. Catch you on the flip side. Bye.